right now I'm going to um, go over a few things and hopefully there will be people who uh, pay attention to the details of what I'm going to go over so everybody can understand uh, living conditions in long-term care institutions. Now, <clears throat> everything isn't always bad. You know, it's kind of, for the most part, things are pretty good here where I am. And, um, it's just that when I need something, or I need somebody to do something, or I need help with something, that's where the punchline, that's where the starting point begins. It, it really works here because they really want to um, do what needs to be done, help people at whatever they need, which is why we live in these concentration camps. <clears throat> um, Today and yesterday, I'm going to go over the details of quite a bit of unnecessary friction between me and, you know, some of the workers. So it's just an hour ago I Got a scratch pad here. I'm gonna re put it up here. Start what? Start out by explaining a few things about, about the kitchen services. And I'm pushing out. <clears throat> so, um,. A few months ago, <clears throat> a few months ago, the kitchen made a change here. There was a company they um, always got raw sugar from. And, um, for whatever reason, they did not want to renew the contract. And this raw sugar we were getting, uh, we were always getting it here for people who didn't want all the processed white garbage, white poison, white heroin, only sweet tasting. And basically, sugar just destroys your body. White sugar. Bleached, processed, poison sugar. <clears throat> and uh, people love to laugh it off. But you just look at the people who have lived on white sugar, white flour, white bleached flower products throughout their life. For one thing, they get they get pretty ugly physically. They're a lot more deteriorated in uh, their physical appearances than people who predominantly uh, live on a healthy, uh, more natural foods diet 
<clears throat> and until 2000, uh, I was pretty much able to live on a pretty healthy diet source. <clears throat> but since I had to uh, apply for long term to shut down my apartment, I um. I knew things were going to go downhill with the economy and all the cutbacks of the 1990s. And things had gotten cut back so much that when they uh, got rid of the raw sugar, I, I started out with a, a meeting with the kitchen manager. And, uh, and she wouldn't budge an inch. And, uh, well, now I know uh, that it really wasn't her decision. But it was Lundy's decision. So, I don't want that poison in my, my blood. And I'm not going to eat white sugar and all their artificial raw sugar for an ounce <clears throat> and uh, so it's been causing quite a few problems for a few months <clears throat> so what happened at one point I talked to the head nurse and the head nurse talked to uh, the kitchen and there's nothing they could do Blah, blah, blah. Then one week I noticed that some of the new companies they were dealing with had uh, a few raw sugars mixed in with all the brown sugar, the brown processed sugar that you put in your hot cereals. <clears throat> so I asked the kitchen manager if she would mind uh, letting somebody separate a few of the raw sugars so I could have them. She said, no. It's like that. So, um, you know, I had a few people who were kind of like, almost like friends. But my real definition of a real friend is somebody you see after work, after school, not just during school or working hours. <clears throat> so, but, but there are some, you know, indecent people in the kitchen or the years. And so, you know, one of the workers was giving me a few and I asked her when, when it ran out if she could ask if uh, you could get it, you know, you get, get a few more just to separate if uh, nobody else wants raw sugar and I'll just kind of like take out the raw sugar from the from the what do you call it the rest of the sugar and she's no so um, I got to fed up and I, I had to fork out quite a bit <clears throat> Of uh, what's uh, left of my slave, uh, my my my, my uh, social allowances check to uh, pick up to get some uh, raw sugar. So once I got it, <clears throat> I just told the head nurse I can't afford this. Every week, you guys are getting most of my check, and uh, what I get uh, uh, sent to me, I I have two bills I gotta pay every month, and I only have uh, thirty, forty left over, and I need to not spend that so that when my next computer falls apart, I can get an upgrade. So I can uh, <clears throat> I keep working on stuff. 
So, they, they understood all that, and <clears throat> still, nothing changed. So I told the, the patient committee, and uh, so they agreed that um, just because uh, nobody else wants to eat a healthy diet doesn't mean that you should be cut from eating the healthy stuff and, and consuming all the junk that makes you sick makes everybody sick. Okay, so they, uh, they, uh, did, and the patient committee did something, and then, uh, one day I, I went out for a while, and when I came back, uh, the receptionist told me that, um, uh, they had, uh, the, the chief, uh, the nurse director for the hospital, uh, uh, was dropped in to see me, but, uh, I wasn't here. And she says, but she left you this. And there was a bag with, uh, a fair bit of raw sugar. And, but she didn't see anything more, the receptionist. So I sent, a, I sent an email to thank the nurse director for uh, fixing the problem with the raw sugar. <clears throat> so yesterday was the day the day arrived, and all my raw sugar ran out. So I thought, well, I'll uh, I'll let a rule just. I was told by the receptionist that uh, when the raw sugar runs out to uh, let me know, or the head nurse told me that. So I, <clears throat> I haven't been feeling good for quite a while. So I, I don't, I always go out of the room checking what's going on around uh, the rest of the place. But uh, when I did get out, oh, she was on her lunch break. So I waited quite a while because she was coming back. She came, and she came in from outside somewhere. <clears throat> and while she was going to put her stuff away, I, uh, I went to mention something about the raw sugar. And she said, I'm still on my break. And it's sort of like, in a way she did it was like, uh, and don't talk to me about that stuff right now. And, you know, it's like, I wish you weren't here. She didn't say that verbally. But her body language, yeah. <clears throat> So I just kind of like waited around, and she came out of the back room where all the staff have her private little lounge and table for meetings and breaks. And she went down the hall to the supply room, so I assumed when she went there, she was finished her break. No. And when she comes out of the supply room, she meets a doctor and a head nurse, assistant head nurse, I mean. And uh, they're just chit-chatting and happy and all that stuff. So when she came down to the desk again, I went to mention it to her again, and she kind of blows me off. Now, I'll, 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 I'll talk to you about that when I finish my break. Oh. So, it was too much to say anything to her when she was on her 
great. But, you know, with the head nurse, the doctor, and just friendly chit chat, that was okay. Fine. <clears throat> but their attitude gets me. And there are a fair number of people who have a really bad attitude a lot of times. <clears throat> Anywhere I've ever been in my life. When um I when I see somebody for the first time, I usually try to be uh you know, it's kinda of like clown around, choke around. How you doing, you know? However, through the years, here has been a lot different. When people became new patients coming in around me, different rooms. Now I got a private room, no problem. Um, uh, but they, they didn't give me a private room just because, you know, they're being nice. I mean, it was part of a provincial thing, I think, but. They were trying to scale the space down from being four in a room to uh, two in a room and then down to uh, private rooms. Some kind of a provincial thing for people in long-term care institutions. And um, so it would be so much better if people could be more friendly. And a couple of times I've mentioned, well, not more than just a couple of times, the head nurses, it's just the head nurses, you know, like, it sure would be good if people were, the, the workers were more friendly, you know, like, and they come to work, go around. Uh, I, I've mentioned more than once about that it be, it could be pretty good if uh, uh, the head nurses at the report session went around all the rooms with everybody and all the the nurses, the PAs, go around to every room, you know, be polite. Good morning, how are you today, you know, blah, 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 you know, but they don't. No, they have these secret report sessions they have at the beginning of every shift. <clears throat> and um, that's the way the mechanical world goes. So today, um, my breakfast arrived. Okay, so... Well, I got in a bit of an argument with the receptionist and then the assistant and the head nurse heard the thing and she thought I wanted to talk to her. I said, no, I just kind of like, I was told that when the raw sugar ran out to, uh, to tell the receptionist, and that's what I did. But I did tell her I didn't like, I don't like her attitude the way she is a lot of times. And, uh, so this morning breakfast arrived. And there was no raw sugar. So I rang my bell. I asked, uh, the nurse answered the bell. I asked them to, uh, Call down to the kitchen, ask them to send up a, uh, a couple of honeys because uh, there is no raw sugar on my tray. And I uh, be to stand there like, well, here's the guy, here's the kitchen person you should be telling it to. Uh, uh, he's the one to do it. I said, no, he's not. Uh, this guy is uh, delivering all the trees and all the floors and it's not up to him to do it. It's 
the kitchen staff and he kind of like blew me off. And so I said, will you call the kitchen to send up two honeys, please? And he refused, okay? It's a snobby bastard, all right? <clears throat> okay, so this is the way things go quite a few times. And I know other people through the years, they just seem to resign to their fate in these places. But I have no intentions as just resigning to my fate. Sorry, I'm not. And there are people who love to rub my nose in it. How I need their help. And they don't have to give it to me. Even though they're being paid pretty well for anything they do and don't do. All right. So this here says, so he, he would not call the kitchen. So I asked him, uh, if, uh, the receptionist was here if I could talk to her. He says she's on the sixth floor. So I called the sixth floor. And when she found out I called her on the sixth floor, she was upset that I would call the sixth floor. I says, uh, you know, uh, I, I was just told that when the, the rock sugar ran out to let you know. And she says, oh, I can't remember what she started rambling on about. It's just complaining that I was calling the sixth floor and I'm not allowed to talk to her when she's not on the seventh floor. <clears throat> and uh, I says, look, uh, did you do anything about the raw sugar yesterday after I mentioned it to her? After I mentioned it to you, she says, um, blah, you know, whatever she said, I don't know. And I says, w will you, um, she said, I'll put you through to the head nurse. And I was waiting on the line, on and on and on. Then I realized she didn't, she didn't put me, on, uh, put me through to him at all. She just hung up, so I called her back. So we got in pretty, pretty good little fireworks going back and forth. But see, that, then that's it, you know. I'm like, <clears throat> so this idea that I was given that finally the raw sugar thing had been, been resolved. Is is a farce. Oh, is she the, the when I had the fireworks with um, the receptionist uh, the second time this morning? She finally handed me to the assistant head nurse. Now it is really eats my gut the way she came on. She said. Well, why did you get, uh, uh, run out of raw sugar so soon? You know? And she says, how many raw sugars do you use? And I'll tell you, that makes me sick. <clears throat> So, then she says, you know, it's not urgent. And, uh, and, uh, uh, 
But it, it, it is not the kitchen that does that. It is it, we have to do it ourselves. We have to, to go outside to get the raw sugar for you. And we do it because we're nice people. I said, bullshit. You do it because you're nice people. And then she started trying to contradict me this. So we are nice people. And I'll tell you, that's what gets me. People, they were so self-righteous that they actually have to tell you how to think about them. You know, <clears throat> and then you got these Quebec imbeciles for death. You know, when conditions in these long term institutions and hospitals are the way they are. Uh, a lot of the people that work here uh, don't uh, don't understand the way things are at all. They really don't. There's a lot of good people that work in this place and other places, but nobody knows how things really are except the people who live in these places. So, so much for the presentation they did a year ago about living with dignity. The, the, the conditions, the protocols of these places is guaranteed to make sure that unless you're uh, in a bed and you can't get up, you can't get out and you don't know very much of anything, you just lay in bed and never need anything, uh, then, then everything's okay. But if you're anybody who, who needs something or you need to help to do stuff and you're uh, functional and like I, I usually have schedules I you know stuff I'm working on stuff I'm studying uh, watching video presentations and stuff and radio shows on specific things which are really helpful on a the, uh, on a society level to to help people with uh, things that are going down the wrong way in the U.S., Canada, all over the world. And as long as these people got their uh, bigger salaries and their convenient lifestyles, uh, they don't want to know anything but the positive, happy, happy-go-lucky stuff that 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 makes them so happy and carefree, and they don't really give a shit about the living conditions they are partly responsible for. <clears throat> now it's kind of like for the most part. These people are good people, <clears throat> but the system that they uphold, the system that they implement and uphold is rotten to the core. Um, I just can't do the subject justice, but you know, for for long-term care institutions, 
worldwide. There needs to be an overhaul. There really needs to be a complete overhaul. And you know something? The biggest overhaul we need is in their basic training courses. They don't get very much of the things they need while they're in nurses' college. And these uh, nurse assistants called PAs in the CJEPs. They just kind of like basically go to work like, you know, it's, oh well, factory, warehouse, whatever. Instead of going to work and realizing, hey, you know, there's people in this place where you're working. And uh, because you're the host, you know, to, you know, make more of an effort to, to be polite and, you know, upbeat and stuff. A few of the people are, you know, very few. <clears throat> Over half the nurses and VAs, when they, when they go to work, they just kind of like, do what they're paid to do and they're not friendly they're not sociable but they are with the staff and if there's some patients who have family members here 24 hours a day pretty much every day well they go way out of their way to make Sure, they're treated almost like staff. I'm going to give you an example of that. You know, the most of the pretty good nurses from the World War II generation, they pretty much uh, retired, and now there's uh, the baby boomer nurses who are retiring now. I remember during the 90s, my first year and a half here, there were still some um, older nurses from the, you know, post-World War II uh, nurses who were working here. And it was, it was great. They were good people. Uh, nurses, uh, Oh, I, I guess they're baby boomers. And my first year and a half that I was here, 95 to 96, never had a problem. There was maybe one person that was a bit of a uh, arrogant cuss, but not worth thinking about. Because the first year and a half uh, that I was here, and nurses were helpful, but the A's were helpful, and uh, that was great. Four years later, when I had to move back in here, there was a lot of people who were not here anymore, and they ran the place like a prison camp. And uh, <clears throat> my first night out of acute care ward in the long term, and I was in really bad shape at that point, trying to recover from my respiratory failure in 2000. And uh, I needed to go to bed earlier that night. And this PA just stomped her feet together, stuck her chest and her big hooters out, and said, Listen, buddy. You'll get the bed when I'm ready, and not before it. And I'll tell you, when I emptied my mouth on her, there was total silence for about 30 seconds. No. <clears throat> And uh, it took, took two or three years 
before they had nurse and assistant nurse, they had nurse at that time. You really started to see, hey, there is a problem. And they worked on improving things. And things were getting better. On and off. And after a few events that happened in 2005, uh, there was a complete clean out. And there's only maybe two or, two or three people, nurses, uh, VAs who were left, new people were moved to long term, new people hired, and things were improving for a while. But the way things have deteriorated, in the last two to three years, I'm fed up. <clears throat> I don't like making people's lives a living hell. But when these people are so arrogant, they stand there and refuse to do something that needs to be done. And then when I finally get pissed off because there's something I need pretty bad. And then the head nurses, all they're concerned about is that you use bad language. If they got this stupid law about verbal violence. For one thing, I don't know whether it's just a hospital thing or if it's really a law they made in the Quebec government or federal government. This verbal violence law, they could stick it up their asses because it's one law I don't recognize. There's no such thing as verbal violence. Violence. Violence is physical. It's not psychological or verbal. <clears throat> All right, I won't say it's not uh, psychological, but it sure as hell is not verbal. <clears throat> Uh, let's see here. Yeah, I covered everything I was, I was going to say. But, um, I really hope that somebody someday uh, watches the video he works in um, palliative care, rehab, or whatever, uh, for rehab hospitals are probably got a lot of problems with, you know, contention between patients and staff, and administrators, over things they go through. I'm not sure about that, but I just think in terms of the the war veterans come back or are disabled and have to readjust and what came out in the Walter Reed scandal in 2005 there and it turned out there's other VA hospitals they were in the same boat I don't know if anything ever change for those guys but uh, <clears throat> my my idea of the medical system for one thing there should never have been this um, 
lockup where disabled people were written off as medical objects. And because of that, because we need help, we do need services, um, everything's all medicalized. Uh, the disability rights groups, uh, not dead yet, adapt, whoever. <clears throat> They had a law they wanted to get passed, or a bill they wanted to get passed a few years ago called the Community Choices Act. And in the 2008 election campaign, I remember seeing one woman confront uh, Senator John McCain and asked him if he would support the CCA. I mean, he just told her flat no. <clears throat> but it would be sure good if there was a totally separate, a totally separate, uh, I don't know what you could call it. Well, let's say budget, okay? Totally separate framework and budget for disabled people, separate from medical, the medical industry. And then you would only have the disabled people who are sick who wind up in the medical system when they are sick or when they are in palliative care mode. <clears throat> but as it stands, it's always been that disabled people are just medical objects. And this gives it the mentality to uh, they're the workers that were just charity objects. We're just charity cases. We want them to bow and do everything we want. And, and they actually have this attitude that we're just spoiled and rotten. He wouldn't believe how many times I've gotten comments from people who work here, how spoiled I am, how good I have it. Wow, they're shitting all over me. Now, when I uh, when I am uh, in the worst medical shape. <clears throat> and I do need more help. Yeah, you know, I I do appreciate your your help. But when I'm not in bad shape, and they try to rub this thing in my face, yeah, you know, that's like uh, and you're and that's supposed to be. Living with dignity, right? And the right to die movement, they feed from environments like this. I just, uh, a month ago, I came across a, uh, a TV piece, TV news, a local uh, TV station, and I saw that uh, a woman lunged to her death in another long-term care institution. Apparently more than one person has done the same thing in a few years. And they had all the windows and everything all kind of, you know, 
safeguard and all that stuff. And I was thinking, well, either, either she committed suicide or somebody had murdered her. But if she committed suicide, you know, I probably there's pretty bad conditions in that in that long term care care place. <clears throat> so there needs to be some overhaul of the way people work work in these places. There needs to be a complete change of training. A complete social engineering change of the way they think about working in these places. <clears throat> and if they did, uh, there wouldn't be so much friction between people who, who live in these places and uh, the staff. <clears throat> I think it would be great if uh, when people go on their ships, they go around and all the rumors say hello to everybody. How you doing today? Have a good sleep last night? Stuff like that. But they don't. There are times when people are in pretty bad shape. Nobody even knows anything about them. Hello? Yeah. <clears throat> so, um, supper came. It's, that's it for now. I almost covered everything. That's it for now. White bleached flower products throughout life. For one thing, they get they get pretty ugly physically. They're a lot more deteriorated in uh, their physical appearances than people who predominantly uh, live a healthy, uh, more natural foods diet. <clears throat> and until 2000, uh, I was pretty much able to live on a pretty healthy diet source. <clears throat> but since I had to uh, apply for long term to shut down my apartment, I um. I knew things are going to go downhill with the economy and all the cutbacks of the 1990s. And things had gotten cut back so much that when they uh, got rid of the raw sugar, I, I started out with a, a meeting with the kitchen manager. And, uh, and she wouldn't budge an inch. And, uh, well, now I know uh, that it really wasn't her decision. But it was Lundy's decision. So, I don't want that poison in my, my blood. And I'm not going to eat white sugar and all their artificial raw sugar for an ounce <clears throat> and uh, so it's been causing quite a few problems for a few months <clears throat> so what happened at one point I talked to the head nurse and the head nurse talked to uh, the kitchen and there's nothing they could do Blah, blah, blah. And one week I noticed that some of the new 
companies they were dealing with had uh, a few raw sugars mixed in with all the brown sugar, the brown processed sugar that you put in your hot cereals. <clears throat> so I asked to get your managers here in mind um, a few months ago. <clears throat> A few months ago, the kitchen made a change here. There was a company they um, always got raw sugar from, and um, for whatever reason, the did not want to renew the contract. And this raw sugar we were getting, uh, we were always getting it here for people who didn't want all the processed white garbage, white poison, white heroin, only sweet tasting. And basically, sugar just destroys your body white sugar, bleached, processed, poison sugar. <clears throat> and uh, people love to laugh it off. But you just look at the people who have lived on white sugar, white flour begins. It, it really works here because they really want to um, do what needs to be done, help people at whatever they need, which is why we live in these concentration camps. <clears throat> um, today and yesterday, I'm going to go over the details of quite a bit of unnecessary friction between me and, you know, some of the workers. So just an hour ago, I got a scratch pad here. I'm going to re put it up here. Start what? Start out by like, explaining a few things about, about the kitchen services. And I'm fizzing out. <clears throat> so, uh, right now I'm going to, um, go over a few things and hopefully there will be people who uh, pay attention to the details of what I'm going to go over so everybody can understand uh, living conditions in long-term care institutions Now, <clears throat> everything isn't always bad. You know, it's kind of, for the most part, things are pretty good here where I am. And um, it's just that when I need something, or I need somebody to do something, or I need help with something. That's where the punchline, that's where the starting point 